thank you for a fresh loaf. We thank you for bread today. We thank you for more than enough. Thank you for all in there. Now we ask God that the word of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And they all said, Amen. 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 talk about delay today. And the title of the message is No Delay in God. Because there's a mindset out there that always mentions God delayed. God delayed. God delayed. God delayed. But every time I look into scripture there, there is no delay in God. There's no delay in God. There is no delay in God. And so I'm going to move fastly right into the scripture. And, and, and I'm going to give it to you in the New King James Version and then the Message Bible. And the New King James Version of 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9. 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9. It says, but beloved, is that eight through nine? Eight through nine. But beloved, 
Do not forget this one thing. Everybody say, do not forget. That with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. I'm saying a lot in there. See, we count days. God doesn't count days because he's not in days. We're in days. He's not in days. And it says there, after you understand this basic principle that one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day, I want you to understand because we understand what time we're talking about and, and outer time we're talking about, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. See, when you understand a thousand is one day and one day is a thousand, then you understand that there is no delay in God and God is not slack. Amen. Amen. Hang with me, we're going somewhere. God is not slack concerning his promises as some count slackness. We delay. We push stuff off. But he doesn't. God cannot lie. This carpet is burgundy. If he, if he says it's blue, all of a sudden it's going to turn blue. What shade, I don't know, but it's going to turn blue because he can't lie. Because he said the carpet's blue. Do you understand that? Now, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to what? Repentance. But that all should come to repentance. He's long-suffering. So his delay can be construed as long-suffering, but it's not a delay. He's just choosing not to operate in a certain place at a certain time. Somebody else say, thank you, Jesus. 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9 in the message. And it says this. Don't overlook the obvious here, friends. With God, one day is as good as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day, as a day. God isn't late with his promise as some measure lateness. Say that with me. God isn't late. How many of you have felt that he, oh, he, God, I need for you to show up right now. Yeah. You're a little late, aren't you, God? No, no, you won't admit it in here. Yeah. But you charge him with being late. Yeah. I need you. Now. Now. And what you're telling God is I need you in my time. Yeah. I need you to do it when I want you to do it. Yeah. And when is that? But maybe if now ain't his word. Ooh, and that's where the frustration comes in. At. And when you say, God delayed. He didn't delay nothing. He chose not to. Because he God. He doesn't have to move for you. But you can help him move by staying faithful. Because there's something about being faithful that helps you receive when God shows up. All right, y'all y'all still out there? Yeah. He is restraining himself on account of you. Thank you, Jesus. Holding back the end because he doesn't want anyone lost. He's giving everyone space and time to change. He's giving everyone space and time to change. Are y'all out there? Why you want him to hurry up? You should be glad he's given me space and time to change. Now let's, let's go back and unpack that. One day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. What seems like forever for us is but a short time for God. 
Just an hour may seem like an eternity for a child, but a moment for an adult. Peter quoted this idea from Psalm 90 and 4. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past and like a watch in the night. A theologian by the name of Clark has shared, all time is nothing before him. Because in the presence as in the nature of God, all is eternity or everlasting. So you are in time, God is in everlasting. And that's where the conflict come in at. Because you want him to move in everlasting like you move in time. And he doesn't. Because he don't have to. Because whenever he moves in everlasting, he can interrupt time whenever he feels like. And he does it. And he'll jump right in and interrupt it. Because he's everlasting. Everlasting is greater than time. He created time for man. Yes. Oh, he created it for you. Yes. So you can number your days. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he created it for you. So you have markers. He doesn't have them, but you do. Yes. I could play certain songs and you'll know where you were when you first heard them. I knew, I, I'm, I'm going to date myself with this one, but I knew what classroom I was sitting in when I first heard about the Beatles. Amen. I remember my first playground friend who bought a Beatle wig and wore it to school. <laughs> remember their haircut, the yeah. straight across his straight. And he was this color with that wig on. <laughs> I remember his name, but I'm not going to call it just in case he might be on social media listening. But he came and he said, I want to hold your hand. I remember where I was. <laughs> now, some of the millennials are in that X, Y, Z gang. They, they don't know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> How many of y'all know uh, who, uh, who the Beatles are? Yeah, yeah. yeah Shirley don't even play. With God, all things are equally near and present to his view. The distance of a thousand years before the occurrence of an event is no more to him than would be a day or a second or a minute. With it, God indeed, there is neither past nor future. It is only the present. And in his present, he looks at everything behind and in front. He looks at everything all, all the way around. He is just present with him. You might have been languishing with your illness for years, but it's still in God's present. Peter here did not give some prophetic formula saying that a prophetic day somehow equals a thousand years. He instead communicated a general principle regarding how we see time and how God sees time. God sees time with a perspective we lack. Even the delay of a thousand years may well seem like a day against a back cloth of eternity. Furthermore, God sees time with no intensity. God does not delay. He does not delay. You want him to come quicker, but he does not delay. How do I know that? I was, I was studying. I had written the message, and I said, I said, let me go back to some places where it would seem like there was a delay, but it's not. Because God doesn't delay. These are the miracles of Jesus. Matthew 8, 5 through 13, just, just note them. The Roman centurion servant was paralyzed for some time. Jesus spoke a word and he was healed. In many of these cases, the person was sick for a while and then they got healed because God interrupted time to bring healing to them. And when you get your healing, God will interrupt it at whatever point. Thank you, Jesus. You might have been haggling with it for years, 
but he's going to interrupt it to bring healing to you. Somebody holler, interrupt God. Luke 7, 11 through 18. Death is not God's delay. When somebody dies, we will think it's too late. It's too late. But Luke 7, 11 through 8 tells us that. There's a woman, the widow of Nain, who was, who was in the funeral procession for her son. Child had died. And Jesus raised him from the dead. So death is not God's delay. Are y'all out there? Even if it go that far, he can resurrect you. Happened with the widow name, and it happened with somebody else. Lazarus had been dead three days. Whew. Did he get up? But a delay-minded sister said, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. Well, you don't understand. You're talking to the God of eternity in your time. And sometimes our time can be get the best of us because we want to rush God. Yeah. When all we need to do is wait on him yeah. to interrupt. Amen. If you prayed about it, wait on him. Interrupt time, God. Are you all out there? Amen. Then Luke 8, 43 and 48. A, a, a woman there had an issue of blood for 12 years. 12 years. Somebody might want to ask, why didn't he get there before she spent all of her resources trying to get well? Why, why couldn't he have come in the first or second year or the third year, the fourth year, or sixth year, eighth year, tenth year, eleventh year? Why did he come? Why was it 12 years? Because that was the time of his appearance. For the glory of God. He did it then because that's when he wanted to do it. <laughs> but she made a demand on him. Something she had not done with anybody in anything. She, she heard he was coming. She made a demand on it in faith. And, and that's the time God says, I'm jumping in time and I'm going to heal her today. Yes. Are, are y'all there? Yes. Because if you stay on this side of it, you'll constantly be bum-rushing God. You got to come now. That's why the lights still go out. That's why the car gets repossessed. That's why the home does go under. But it doesn't mean that God was late. And we want to charge him foolishly. If you had been here, none of that would have happened to me. That's not the case. Because he don't move in your time. But just think, if you stay faithful, he might have a better plan for you. Oh, because God's wisdom is greater. Oh, God. Anybody out there, you know what I'm talking about? How many of you know she was glad at the 12th year you to get healed? See, 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 that's all I'm talking about. Get happy for her at number 12. See, see, see. see, see. She stopped bleeding at number 12. Wow. Wow. Then John 5, 1 through 9. It wasn't 12 for him. This man was an invalid for, 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 for 30, how many years? 38 years. 38 years. And he would go wait by a pool once a year for one angel to show up and trouble the water. And people think it was a godly angel. It wasn't a godly angel because everywhere Jesus went, the Bible says he healed them all. He wouldn't send one angel for one person. Are y'all out there? See, see, you need to get there when the angel show up. It might be the wrong angel. Remember, Satan is an angel. He's a fallen angel. And so, so this man, 30 
38 years, 38 years. I don't have anybody to put me in. Maybe you don't need to get in. Maybe what you need is a touch. So here comes what would look like a delay. God, you let them stay that way 38 years. No, 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 no. That's in our timing. And that's when we want to fault God. This, this, it, God, this could have been better had you shown up a little earlier. <laughs> Anybody ever said that? Yeah. Yeah. We want God to show up earlier. Yeah. Why do we want him to show up earlier? To relieve the pain. Get us out of trouble faster. And then, then the last one I want to cite was John 9, 1 through 12, where well, a man was born blind and, and was healed. But all the religious folks say, who sinned in his life, his mother or his father? But he was blind from birth. He was blind. And so, so, but Jesus healed him. He interrupted time to bring healing to him. There's no delay in God. Ezekiel 33 and 11 says, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the flesh of the wicked but that the wicked turn from his way and live. In other words, God's, did, God's not moving as fast could be the opportunity we need to get it together. Yes. What if Jesus came back before you got saved? Everybody want to holler, delay Jesus. Yeah, delay. Yeah. What if he had shown up yes. before you got saved? But his desire is that none would perish. So his timing is based on the gospel getting to everybody and they have the opportunity to say, that's why the scriptures say, and when this gospel of the kingdom is preached into all the world, then will the end come. Yes. Woo. Yes. And the gospel is going forth faster with social media and everything else. The Bible is still the best, best published book in, in, in the world. More Bibles are published every year than the best-selling novel. Oh, you better get saved because we're approaching the end. Because you never know when the last person going to hear. Are you out there? But let's, let's switch the subject to in, 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 from, from, from what we were originally talking about in, in, in Peter and, and talk about Habakkuk because it's on that same issue of delay. But, but, but let's shift the subject to impatience. We are in time are, are the only ones that experience impatience. You can only be impatient in time. You're not impatient in eternity. Impatient. You can't wait. Sometimes we jumpstart stuff and get into trouble because we impatient. We can't wait on God so we make it happen. I, I, I watch church, certain church settings, and I, I don't mean to offend anybody, but, 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 but you, you can't wait on a real move of the Holy Spirit so you create one. That's why you, you get to dun, 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 dun. And they don't feel he showed up until you dun 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 dun. <laughs> Cause you can't wait on a, new, a real move. That people spontaneously respond to a move in the Holy Ghost without a dun 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 dun. It's just a trigger. It hits an emotional button. And you say, well, I feel the anointing. No, you, you just got, your button was pushed. Oh, I'm, okay, all right. Habakkuk 2, 1 
2 and 3. And this is a backup. Waiting on God to do something. He said, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. And watch to see what he will say to me. And what I will never, and, and what I will answer when I am. And what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. That means when it says it will speak, it will show up. When the vision show up, it testifies of itself. This was the vision. That's the vision. It showed up. It's not on the tablet anymore. It showed up. But you have to wait on it to come to pass. But you don't have to worry when it shows up because when it shows up, it's going to talk. It said there, though it tarries. What tarries? The talking vision. The manifestation. Wait on it. Wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Our, the biggest question most parents were asked when they were on a trip with, a kid, with their kids going somewhere. They'd be in the car maybe a block, maybe a, a few hours. And, and they, what would they ask? Are we there yet? <laughs> now our kids are on the plane. When are we going to get there? And, 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 and they've annoyed parents with that question. The child is excited to reach the destination, but impatient about getting there. Yeah. Oh, oh. I'm excited about going to Disneyland. When are we going to get there? When am I going to get there? And maybe it's not Disneyland for you. What is it that got you excited? You couldn't wait to get there. The parent knows when they will arrive, but the children still get antsy. God knows when it's going to happen, but you still get antsy. How many of you have gotten antsy sometimes? Oh, God, I know you're going to keep your word, but Jesus, you ran me out. I know you're going to make a way, but God, I'm ragged as I can be right now in this. God, God if you don't come quick, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, die in the process? Wait on him. Habakkuk waited for deliverance. God had given him a vision of divine redemption in large bold. Yeah, let this vision was not going according to Habakkuk's plan. Sometimes God can prophesy to you something, but it don't, don't go according to your plan. Oh, God. To the point some of you have said, some of us have said, I don't want to hear one more prophetic word. I want some of them words to happen that I got already. Oh, are y'all out there? Oh. Habakkuk was telling God, are we there yet? Yet Habakkuk was confident that God could keep his promise. Habakkuk heard the Lord's confident answer, it will not delay. The delay, the delay was only in Habakkuk's eye. It is only in your eyes. That's the only place there is a lay. Habakkuk was called to trust in God's timing over his own. And you are called to trust God's timing more than your own. Tap somebody and say, trust God's timing more than your own. Oh, that's nasty, isn't it? That's net. Wait. Trust his timing. Oh, my God. I don't want to do that. That's rough on me. I can't handle that. Hebrews 10, 37 says, For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Jesus is coming, but he's saying... In spite of that, 
Those who have been made righteous already that trust him, that love him, you trust him to show up. You live by faith until it shows up. Because you are just, you live by faith. Oh, God, God. Because you are just, you live it by faith. You, I, hey, hey I, I'm, I, 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 you know, I'm going to wait on God. How many does that frustrate you when somebody says, just wait? <laughs> just wait. How many of you frustrated in the wait right now? Oh, God, I, I see him. Come on, come on. Admit it. Admit it. I, I'm frustrated in the wait. God, God. Well, slap God if you're that man. <laughs> Just go on and slap him into eternity. Go on, hit him. Get mad, pitch a fit. At the end of the day. How many of you are just? So if you're just, you live by what? That what God says, he will bring to pass. Are y'all are y'all out there? Yeah. Abraham believed by faith, even though a lot of the things God said to him he didn't see. But it was accounted to him for righteousness because he was justified by believing. <coughs> I believe you because you said it. So that means I'm taking all responsibility off of, off of me with you, God, trying to make you do something. It's all on you, God. I trust you. And if, it's, if it don't happen as soon as I want it to, I still trust you. Whoa. Oh, oh that's a mess today. Because that's where we get tore up at in the weight. We get angry, we get depressed, we walk away, we, we, we get mad, we, we say, I'm not coming back, and, and we stop believing. Well, see, that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to stay locked into time and not move into eternity. And know that the God you serve is eternal, and, and, and he cannot lie, and, and he has a destiny for you that he can bring to pass when he wants to bring to pass. That's why sometimes we even uh, do, do, do wrong, we make wrong decisions because we can't wait. Oh, God, oh, God. And we suffer with, with the results of that decision because we didn't wait on the Lord. Oh, God, God, all of us have been there. We made a decision, and, 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 and it shows up once a month to us, that decision. You know. We're paying on it, didn't we? It will surely come. It will not delay. It will surely come. It will not delay. Wait on the Lord. That's all I want to do. I've coughed half the night. And most of the night before. To get up and stand here today. And tell you. To wait on the Lord. My coughing couldn't keep me from church. And my sides are sore from coughing so hard. But I got on up, drug myself through the shower. Because I realized that eternity is greater than the time of my discomfort. See, and if you can get past your time of discomfort... Maybe you will see the glory of God. But something you got to push through and pass without excuses. Fall out afterward. But at the end of the day, say, I did the will of God for my life. Wait on the Lord. 
be of good courage to just live by faith. And he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say. Blessings to you today. My God. Put your hand up and say, I'm going to wait, God. I'm the just. And I live by faith. And I'm going to wait. And so I rebuke frustration. I rebuke anxiousness. I rebuke all of those things that want to make me run ahead of you. And I'm going to wait on you. Because in the end, because in the end what, you have for me what you have for me will testify to me, testify to me and, not and not lie. Give God a praise in this room. It will testify to me and not lie.